Hey there, welcome FileMaker learners. We're here to learn more about FileMaker. My name is Matt Petrowski and in this video, what are we gonna be learning? Well, we're gonna be taking a look at the logical function functions. So stick around and we'll be taking a look. All right, so, <laughs> well, I'm shooting this live, so that's why you're gonna see those uh, flubs and everything that uh, comes out when I'm talking. I'm shooting this live because I love to have people on here and able to ask questions. There's a slight delay, but uh, let's get into the content. So I'm shooting these a lot of these videos ad hoc. I don't have a definitive plan of what I'm going to cover. I just come up with a general area of FileMaker, and in this one, we're going a little more freeform. So I'm gonna look off to the side here and I'm checking out my other monitor. If you'd like to follow along, I'd suggest that you do uh, choose these options. I'm working in a copy of FileMaker 16 and you can choose, um, I'm going to choose a new solution for this video. And again, like I mentioned, I'm in FileMaker 16. So as soon as I choose that, mine's coming up off screen. Let me move that on screen and put it onto my desktop. Um, I'm just gonna call mine logical functions. And we're going to be taking, uh, not functions, uh, we're going to be taking a look at those. So as I save that file, FileMaker is going to come up immediately with Manage Database, something we should at this point be familiar with. And uh, we're just going to play in this database. Now, uh, I've mentioned this in all of my other videos. If you were following this series, I really lament the fact that if you only have a copy of FileMaker Pro, you're really sort of hurting yourself in terms of learning FileMaker uh, because FileMaker Advanced gives us some very critical tools. Now I showed you earlier how to actually create two fields. One of them you would be called um, code, and then the next one would be called result. And this is only if you have just a standard copy of FileMaker Pro, and you can put those on the layout. If you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, then you'll need to visit a previous video just a few back, where I believe I talk about um, I forget what the title of the video is. You'll have to look back, go just back a, a few videos from this one. If we have a copy of FileMaker Advance, which is what we want, then we have access to these right here, the data viewer and the debugger. And the debugger was gonna be so fun when we get into that one, but the data viewer is our primary way where we can play with FileMaker's calculation engine without actually having to create any fields or do anything. So, I'm going to open up the data viewer because I am using FileMaker Advanced. I'm going to click on the watch area and then we can just play with FileMaker's functions because right here we have the calculation engine. As I scroll this off, we can actually just work with the functions. Now I've scrolled my area out really far here. If this is not visible on your copy, it should be, then it may be because of that little button right there. In order to reveal the functions, many different ways to look at the functions. We can right click as I scroll the window here, or not right click, excuse me. We can click and we can look at all functions by name or by type. I suggest going just directly to the logical functions if you'd like to follow along. That will bring us right to just that section, allowing us to focus on the logical functions. And here is the deal. You can't really you can't do anything in your FileMaker database without the logical functions. They are the switches to all of the paths that is your giant train track of FileMaker solution. If that doesn't make sense, that's just how I think of it. Um, we've got uh, different paths going all kinds of different ways, processes happening, and we need to know how to flip switches in order to make things happen. So that's what we're learning today. The number one biggest bad boy on the block is our wonderful if function. Now without the if, we wouldn't be able to choose which direction we go. Uh, if this happens, then we go this way. Otherwise, we go that way. And that's truly what the if is. Now, if you have not looked at one of the previous videos that I have in this series, we're very interested in when it comes to FileMaker's functions, when we're learning them, of these uh, braces, the curly braces. That is because they indicate something that is optional. So in this if statement, we have to recognize that the result number two, or the else part of the if equation is not absolutely required. If I took that away, this is a completely legitimate statement to have right here. 
if test, then we're going to have result one. Now a test can be anything in FileMaker. Um, it can be one plus one, which doesn't necessarily make sense, but we can we can actually do this if uh, result one plus one equal uh, one plus one. I uh, I was going to put woohoo here. Let's go ahead and put that woohoo. Then we get our result. So that's a that's something that evaluates to true. One plus one, it actually happens. But if we add something to this, one plus one equals three, notice that we don't get a result. And that's because we took that optional result portion off. Now, what's good about knowing this is that when it comes to let variables or variables in general, this is a great way to clear variables. Now, the reason that I'm showing this right off the bat is because there's a lot of ways that you can use calculations and a lot of developers or a lot of FileMaker learners, when they start out, they don't start out with a uh, mindset of how the logic functions work or how their particular logic can be composed. Many times things are written very explicitly and that reads well, but it's not always necessary. So let's take a look at an example of that. In this case, what we have if one plus one equals two, and it does, and we get our true result, Otherwise, if it did not, we'll put the else condition back on, boo. So if this was not true, we would get our boo. What happens is with the logical functions, you don't, when you're referencing some of your fields, then you don't always have to put the explicit condition. So let's add a field into our database really quickly here. I'm going to select on manage database and I'm just going to put in any old field. And I'm just going to type the word field. It's defaulting to a text field, which is fine. We'll create that and we'll say OK. Now this is a very common scenario, what we're going to do right here, where we've got, let me zoom out a little bit more here. And I actually wanted to move my window. There we go. So right here we have a field and you're always referencing your fields in FileMaker. So, and I'm going to get to that variable portion that I mentioned earlier. So this is one of your most common things to do is to determine whether something has a certain state or one of the most popular things of is if a value is empty on a particular record. So what we could say is in FileMaker's calculation, you can always embed functions within other functions. And the way that FileMaker works, it works from the inside out when you're composing a calculation. So I'm going to type in the is empty and bring that particular function up. So you can see right here, it's actually going to make sense is empty field. Of course, FileMaker is going to have to qualify that field with its context. Context is what layout am I on and what layout is that tied to in terms of table occurrence and what table occurrence is that tied to in terms of the base table. I know three steps to go through there, but eventually you start to think in terms of tables. So what I'm saying here is if is empty my field, then I get a result of has a value. Um, so, or excuse me, is empty, or does not have, I'll just put no value, has value. All right, so when we're looking at the logical functions, this is what I see in a lot of FileMaker database systems. I will see a user do this, if is empty true, which completely switches the logic right now because the first thing you're saying, if it is empty, well, this is the same thing. This is not a switch right here. Um, so this is true that there is no value. But when we look at this, what we want to understand is that the way that you compose a logical function typically is however it makes the most sense to you. And there are the two ways that you can. There's, <laughs> this is just how it is in life. Some people have a more optimistic outlook and some people have a more pessimistic outlook. So no matter how you compose your calculation, there's no absolute one way to do this because I can say if is empty, this field equals true, or I can say just plainly, if it's empty, which is true, or I can completely switch the logic on this around. Now down here at the bottom or in the side of the calculation, you're going to see these other items of not and 
or XOR, and then the, well, this one isn't a, a logical function per se. This is your exponent. So these four, not, and, or, XOR. XOR, as a new FileMaker learner, don't even think that it exists. You really don't even have to pay attention to that. That is used so infrequently when you're starting to learn FileMaker and it's only when you really get down the path that you know whether you want to use it or not and it, that's a performance type of thing. But these first three, you will be using them and not will switch the logic of anything and is when you're combining two pieces in order to determine the logic, and the same with OR. So think of AND and OR as combiners. They combine when you're testing for two different things, and NOT is a something you can flip things around or flip things upside down. And so many times, the way that I program is you're going to program the way that it reads best for you. And you want to program it so that it does read pretty well. So I'm going to read this. If is empty, my field, then we're returning no value. Otherwise, has value. Now, sometimes, depending on what you're going to actually be programming against, it makes more sense to say this. If not is empty, so if it's not empty, then you can actually have this come first instead of this one. So it may read better to you to actually have the has value as opposed to the no value first. And that's because I switched this is empty. I flipped is empty up on its head and I said, if not is empty. So this really comes down to what's most comfortable to you in terms of how you're going to code in FileMaker. Because maybe you like to see that the positive result comes first as opposed to the negative result. Now there's a great video on uh, YouTube here um, from DevCon 2017 from Chris Irvine that talks in depth about short circuiting and working with the logical functions and how this is going really deep into FileMaker where as you code, every time you're thinking of what is the shortest path to the quickest answer. And if you can have FileMaker's calculation engine give the quickest answer first and then if conditions are met, have to do those later, that's when you get a faster application. And if you think about it, over the lifetime of however long you build a FileMaker solution, all of this logic that you build up into the solution, well, the quicker FileMaker can get to an answer, the faster your solution is. So, we have learned so far that the if statement does not actually require the optional second result. And if we look at the formatting of the if function, and I'll put in fm if, which is a shortcut that I have for how I actually like to format my if statements, I can actually do the same thing of what I've got, what I have right here. I like to see my test on one line, then I like to see my result on another line. Let's see, cop, cut that, paste that, and then I like to see the other value with else. Now this is a comment, I've talked about this. This is just one of the ways that it makes it a little bit easier to read this if spaces help you out, space your code, so that you can have an easier time reading your code. So right now this will re probably read much easier for me. If not, is if the, the way that I read it is I actually look at this first. It's sort of like uh, some foreign languages where you look at this, you say, okay, if the field is not empty, has value, otherwise no value. So that for me is the easiest way to actually read the if statement. So let's take a look at some of the other functions, but just before we do that, let's take a look at one of the reasons that I like the fact that the if statement does not have to have that second value. When it comes to let functions, I'll type in a shortcut here of let. So I'm going to say use the let function to actually declare, and we're going to learn that you would do this within the process of a script that you're going to write. You many times will be creating variables. And so variables can be named whatever you want. So a variable, and let's do a double dollar sign variable right here, and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll write an if statement assigning it to this variable, and I should use my own standards of all caps in order to identify that it's a global variable in nature. So we'll put the same thing, if is empty, my field, then we want to have 
a value. So we'll just say, um, actually we'll say something that makes sense, empty. And here we'll put, doesn't matter. Now this may be super confusing right here. And the reason is, in the evaluation process of this let function, I'm only using this let function just in order to set this global variable. I really, at this stage, don't care about the result. So whatever is returned here, and it's not going to evaluate because I, in a let function, I can't have this little trailing, the very last item in a multiple value let function, that is everything in between these brackets, you can't have a trailing semicolon on this because I should be able to see the result right down here of doesn't matter because that's this is the ultimate return result of the let function. So again, it doesn't matter to me because I don't care about this, I care about this portion just for the purpose of showing you the value of knowing that the if doesn't have to return a value. Because what it's saying right now is it's saying, FileMaker, using the let function, we're going to assign into this temporary global variable, temporary for as long as the file is opened. When it closes, this gets deleted, goes away. If my field is empty, then we're going to say that it's empty. Otherwise, we don't have a result, which means that this variable would actually be cleared. So let's go take a look at this and see what happens or what it would happen in the rest of the user interface. We'll monitor this and we can see quite clearly that when we want to see all of our temporary variables, we look at the current tab in the data viewer and we can see right here that variable is currently set to empty. Now the logic that I had put into this was if the field is empty itself. So what happens if we go enter a value into this field? We're gonna to need to put the field on the layout first off. So I'm gonna drag the field out. We'll put the field, go ahead, you can create the label. And this is all predicated on, I do not want to save the changes. Thank you, FileMaker. And I am going to need a record. Remember, you will always need records in order to deal or work with data. So the logic in the calculation that I've written in the data viewer here, and again, it only exists in the data viewer, is basically saying, if it's empty, go ahead and set a variable to a value of empty. But what happens when there is a value? I'll type not empty here, and we'll go to the watch variable. Now, the way the reason that the way that FileMaker's calculation engine works is the calculation has to be evaluated. It has not been evaluated behind the scenes. If this was a calculation field, as soon as I exited this record or this field and the data was committed, then basically FileMaker's calculation engine would have fired. But in this case, because I'm using the data viewer, the calculation itself has not been evaluated because the watch area or the watch variable has not been shown. As soon as I click on the watch variable, this calculation was now just executed, and when I go back to current, the variable is now gone. And that's because there was no default portion or no else portion to the if statement. So in this case, what I did is, you can sort of think of it in terms of, I used the, uh, the if statement sort of as a byproduct of the fact that I don't have to have a return value. So hopefully I've explained that in a way that's uh, not too confusing. If you have a question, you can put it in the, uh, and you're watching this live, you can put it in the uh, chat. Otherwise, you can put it in the comments down below with regards to what's going on. I hope that's not too confusing for a, a new FileMaker learner. I've kept things really simple. We've only dealt with two functions. Oh, three. If, which is our switch, and is empty. So it should be straightforward and this let. All right, so now let's move on to the bigger brother of the if statement, because the if statement, you can only have two possible results. The big brother, if you have any time where you want more than that, then you're going to be using FileMaker's case statement. And the case statement, again, we want to remember everything in between the curly braces, it's all optional. So if we look at this, what do the case statement and the if statement have in common? Well, they're almost exactly the same. Um, you have a test and then you have a result. So internally, these both work the same way. Now, just a little um, 
a nice little trip back in history, it used to be that you had to have two values with the if statement. If you're an older FileMaker developer and you're watching this video and you say, I remember the days where if used to have to have uh, the positive result or a, a, an initial result and a, a second result. And what happened is a lot of older FileMaker developers got into the habit of using case. So my suggestion is if you are coming from days long gone in FileMaker and you are still using the case, I wouldn't do that anymore. Mostly because if reads a lot better and both of them are exactly the same. But let's look at how they're different. The case statement, as we saw, allows you to do multiple tests. If you're coming from a different development environment, then there is a function in most other languages, uh, PHP, um, I don't know that it is in Python or what have you, it's definitely in PHP, called switch. And that's what the case statement is. Um, it's named switch in other languages because when you hit a given condition, you're going to switch to that result. And so that's how I basically think about the case statement. And the case statement works like this. I'm going to put my easier to read version. I'm going to type in FM case. You will not be able to type in FM case into your copy of FileMaker. That is a shortcut expansion tool that I have that expands the calculation out into the format that I prefer. Um, I believe I referenced that in a previous video and I'll show you that in the resources. Hopefully I'll remember it towards the end of this video. So this is a lot easier to understand as opposed to FileMaker's convoluted uh, way of explaining this, primarily because uh, these get in the way and the tests don't really come out so that you can understand them as easily as you can right here with the nice indenting. So we'll use this one. So with a case statement, the way that it works is you get to have multiple tests in order to have multiple possible results. So I can have as many of these as I want. I could put test three, test four, and so on. Of course, I'd need to have them test three and so forth. And we'll just put that one right there. But the cool thing about the way that the case statement works is you can have, and let's put in something really simple. Let's get our field right here. If field equals, and we'll do something super simple, we'll copy this and use it in multiple places, and we'll just change our values, orange, red, and green. You can have a result for each of these. Yay, you like blue. And we'll just do the same thing for each of these so that it makes sense. And you may be asking, where am I actually going to use this type of functionality? Well, one of the primary ways that you'll use this is actually on FileMaker's conditional formatting. FileMaker, like a spreadsheet, has the ability to change the color of things on the layout for a field or a text box or what have you. And the case statement becomes really helpful because you can look for multiple different values. Now, when we're programming in FileMaker, Typically what we want to do behind the scenes is use numbers instead of values. This is a very big lesson in FileMaker if you are a new FileMaker learner because numbers are much easier to translate into an equivalent value as opposed to using a literal string. So in this scenario, what I would probably do is if I would say something like if logical functions field equals one, then it's blue, if it equals two, if it equals three, and we'll have to look at down the road how you would actually translate this in terms of using a value list that uh, corresponds. It's, it's called an enumeration. So basically when a user chooses from a pop-up, they would see the word blue, but behind the scenes you would actually use the value of one because with the value of one, you could then change the language if you want. If the user had chosen one, you could choose blue or azul or you know any other language in order to use that particular um, value to represent. So numbers always work best. That's why computers use numbers. We try to use numbers as well. But you also have a default result from this. So the default result can be anything like you didn't choose a color. 
So currently we have a situation where, and I'm gonna get these two off so that we can actually see on screen what's going on with all of these. So currently our, our default result is you didn't choose a color. Let's play with this with the let function. This is what I love about the let function. We can sit here and play with FileMaker's calculations. I'll type in fm let here for me. And I will put in um, this value right here. I'll indent that. Actually, my indenting gets off a little bit, but not too bad. I can actually still indent it so that it's useful. So we will change this now to rather than referencing the field, because I don't want to have to go in and out of FileMaker's um, of this calculation dialog box for us to, to play with it. And I'm going to type in, I'm going to say let answer equal, and then we'll have a, an expression. And I'll change this rather than referencing the field, I'm going to reference this variable right here. Now, keep in mind, if you haven't watched my other, my previous video about the let function, go back and look at it because I don't want you to be confused by what I'm doing. All I'm doing right now is I'm choosing in the context of this calculation, I'm choosing to use this little variable of the let function so that I can play with the calculation where normally I would use the value that's coming from my field. That's where it would look like right here. I would be using you know, whatever value is in the field. Well, I don't wanna go back in inside and out of this dialog box. I wanna be able to test right here. So I'm going to replace my reference to my field with a reference to this va uh, variable so that I can play with it. But again, the value would be coming from your field. So what we can do right here is, let's see, I can't have that trailing value again. And we're going to not have this be expression, but I can put one. Okay, so if one had existed in my field, thinking this answer is the field again, I get yay you like blue. And if it was two, then yay you like orange. And if it was something that other than that value, it goes all the way to the default. Now here's where we get to control within the case statement multiple different options. And we can do that when we combine it with the operators that we took a look at right over here. Not, and, and, or. So now let's, let's play with and, and, or in order to see what we get for result with the case statement. This is where you start to think where you start to think in reverse of the questions. You start to think of the answers. Okay, in this scenario, I'm only going to have two answers, and those two answers are either blue or orange, because it really wouldn't make sense for me to do this right here. If I go down and I say, if answer equals three, yay, you like blue, I've just duplicated what I have right up here. I already have that answer. I already have the answer of blue. Why do I want to create another possible answer of blue? Well, this will work. I can say, yes, the answer is one, yay, you like blue, or the answer is three, or, or the answer is there's our answer right there. If you are talking about it as you go through it, you come up with the solution that is often best to use in FileMaker. So thinking in terms of the answers first instead of the questions, I can actually say there's really only one blue result, only one answer. And now I can actually say if answer equals one or answer equals three, then I get blue. So now it doesn't matter whether I put one or two, FileMaker, or one or three, FileMaker will return that first response. And you can combine the same thing. Uh, you can combine them with and. If uh, answer equals two and, and this won't actually work, and answer equals four. Now I'll probably never get this because if I put four, you can see it gives me, you didn't choose a color. If I put two, you still didn't choose a color because this doesn't make sense right here. You can't and together two and four, at least not currently in this context. But there are different ways where you can use the and, and we'll probably see that when we're scripting and so forth. But this is what, 
this is the core of the logic that you're going to use. We always want to code things in FileMaker from the standpoint of what they call DRY. And DRY stands for D, uh, well the acronym DRY is do not repeat yourself. And so anytime that you see your, your code being repeated, you wanna narrow things down so that you only have the one result and then you basically put all of your multiple tests on that and you can have those multiple conditions, as many as you want, equals six. And we'll take that one off right there in order to arrive at what you want as a result. So if I'm six, I'm blue. If I'm three, I'm blue. If I'm one, I'm blue. If I'm two, I'm orange. And I hope you get the idea in terms of these multiple options. So that's our if statement and our case statement. Those are the two biggest logical branching functions that you're going to use, but there are others that we have as well. We'll be able to get to those in other videos. I don't like to spend uh, much more than 30 minutes and then I like to get to questions. Um, if you have questions specifically about logical functions that we have over here, obviously I only went through the case and the if right here. Um, I will just briefly go through this list and give you a rundown of sort of how frequently I find myself using particular functions so that you know, you know, should I spend the time to learn them? If and case, use them a lot, probably, you know, 90% of the time out of all FileMaker functions. Choose, I'm going to put that in the 20% category, but extremely useful to know when you need to know it. A very good uh, picking type of calculation. Evaluate an evaluation error, probably less than one to 2% in the whole of uh, a FileMaker database. Mostly use it just for playing around with FileMaker. Um, I do use it with a trick where I put data onto a layout because you can put a valid FileMaker calculation just into a regular text box on the layout and then you can evaluate that. You can tell FileMaker's calculation engine to evaluate it and it creates for a lot of flexibility. Execute SQL, advanced FileMaker. You're really not going to need to use that until you're later in your FileMaker development career. And once you do start to use it, I'd say probably 10% of the time out of my development. Git is Boolean, a coercion function, not going to use it a whole lot. I can say that for me, probably less than 1% or even half of a percent in all of FileMaker uh, development. Uh, get AV player attribute, uh, that is something specific to tr script triggers. I have never used it myself, um, and you really only are going to use that on mobile because it's a mobile only function. Get field and get field name. Um, those are probably going to fall into the 25 30 percent in terms of my the way that I program but they are things that you will use later on down the road they are advanced development that deal with a topic called abstraction so that you can make your scripts and your calculations work via a reference to something rather than putting something explicitly into the calculation. Very powerful. I love these two functions. It'll be a fun video to get to. Get layout object attribute, a wonderful function that allows you to grab the attributes, many different attributes, uh, width, height, size, content, source, um, bounds, all kinds of things, in particular of layout objects. And so those layout objects allow you to do a lot of cool things in FileMaker, but usage, I'm going to throw that probably at the, in all of FileMaker development, probably a 10% or maybe 15%. Get nth record, extremely useful when working across related data, and that's something that you'll use um, in order to extract data from related records. If granddaddy, is empty, this is a biggie. This one falls right in line with if and case, probably an 80 percenter, maybe a 90 percenter. Is valid, uh, it's probably a, maybe a 2%, maybe a 5%. I will tend to use this in order to check for the validity of data across relationships. But of course you can use is empty as easily as you can use is valid. Is valid is something, uh, we'll have to look at that one. You can look at the documentation. Is valid expression? Again, hardly will ever use it. Let, use it all the time. Probably a 95% for me. I use let uh, a lot of the time. It is right in the same class with if, case, and so forth. Look up and look up next? Almost never. Um, hardly will ever use those 
unless you know that you're using them within the context of saving historical data. And typically that's within the realm of um, when you're doing an inventory type solution. And self, use it all the time with auto enter. So what did we learn in this video? Out of all of these logical functions, you can throw away probably half of them in terms of what you truly need to know. It's sort of like a, a learning a foreign language. Really, there is a core set of words and phrases that will get you 90% to what you need to know, but then you have all of these esoteric items. So we've learned that the most critical ones that we wanna know in logical are case, of course, if, is empty, let, for sure, self, and then we're going to come to the choose, and then definitely as we get down the road, execute SQL is going to be valuable, and the get field and get field name, and get layout object. The rest of them, you're really only going to need to use them when they actually make sense. And so don't worry about the rest of those. Spend time learning all of your conditions with the if statement. Spend time learning, the, learning and using the case statement, and... Uh, the lat function in order to practice and play around. So let's head over, I went a few minutes over of my 30. Let's head over to see if we've got any comments. And I uh, need to get out of that so that I can actually switch to my video chat and bring those comments up on screen. See if we've got anything. All right, morning HBH group, one of my regulars on these videos. And uh, Hermund, how you doing? Over in Sweden, I think and how to print a PDF file instead of printer using logic functions. Ah, good question, and we can answer that one. Uh, we can do a very quick little condition within a script in order to determine whether we print a PDF versus a, um, uh, versus a, well, you could do this with a button, but we will uh, take a look at that. Hey, Lee, how's it going? And uh, let's see here. Sometimes we use evaluate as an auto enter on a field to clear out a field like the one with the checkbox set. Is that a bad idea? I've heard it said. All right, so let's think about this. We use evaluate as an auto enter on a field to clear out a field like a checkbox. Um, if you can give me a little bit more clarification on that, there's many different ways in order to clear something out. Um, so I'm not clear on how you're using the evaluate, but let's look at that print a file to PDF instead of a printer using logic functions. We will open up a script and let me switch to desktop really quickly and we'll create a new script here. We'll zoom in and we'll take a look at actually um, we will because the here's a good learning lesson too. Um, in FileMaker, when you're naming your scripts, if you name something like print PDF, that's very specific versus print uh, to printer, that also is very specific. If you get more generic and more general, then that's when you get to actually have your scripts do some branching. So um, I was what I thought right off of my, my head, based on that comment, was uh, send output. And so send output would use a condition. We have the same thing in the calculation engine that we have here in the scripts. We just start to type if and we get an if function. Now the if function can basically take the same type of input. And in this scenario, in FileMaker, you can have and hook up things however you want. But uh, according to the way that I'm interpreting the question, we would basically there'd be two ways you could do this. You could have two buttons on the screen, obviously. You would have a button that has a printer icon and that would send to the printer and a button that would send to a PDF icon. But if you wanted to have a button that uh, basically prompted the user, you could do it with a dialog box or prompted or, or was determined based on a switch in the layout itself where you just tap a switch and it, it says send to the printer versus send to the... Um, PDF, that's really up to you in terms of how it would actually be coded. So I'm going to code this up in a, uh, this is called um, pseudocode, where this is not code that's actually wired up into my FileMaker database, but it's code that I think about and can plan out as I think about the process. So this is also a good learning lesson when you're dealing with FileMaker. If you want to write pseudocode, you can write using variables before you even have fields or values that exist. So I can write something like if switch equals PDF, 
then I would be uh, do send as, I think it's PDF, I'll just type in PDF, save records as PDF. Otherwise, else, I would just put in FileMaker's print function. So there's a, a very simple logical break right there. Now, where would PDF be coming from? Well, if I only had one button, I would, for example, I'm going to, we're going to jump a little ahead here using a set variable and I'll move that to the top. FileMaker has these things called script parameters. So if I only had one single button or uh, if I had one button that was using the same script and I was bringing a value into the script to tell the script which way to go, which switch using the if, then that button would have a value that would be passed into the script. And I would receive that value with a, um, I'll call this direction for some reason. And I'll receive the value with this one function, get script parameter. This is a, a bit of a hard example to come up with here. Uh, script parameter. So this would presumably be something that was passed into this particular script. We're heading off down a little path here but it does, uh, it's not too bad. We would say, in this case, we would change this to if direction. So in this script, what we've just done, this simple little script, we're, we're basically switching and going into two directions, Ahmed. Um, we're basically saying that a button in the user interface, which has a value that I'm passing into this script, which would either have the value of PDF or printer, and if it came into this script, we would say, if the direction that we want to go is PDF, then we would actually f use FileMaker scripts to do the PDF. Otherwise, the default that would happen would we would print. Now, here's a key thing. You always have to think about the default is always going to happen regardless of what comes in. If the first condition isn't met in this script, then the, the default is going to happen. So sometimes you do want to have a very explicit thing so that the default doesn't happen. So in that regard, if I was going to change this up where I was saying I can really only have two options, PDF or printer. Otherwise, I want nothing to happen because what's going to happen is in this script, it comes in, it would get the value. If it was told to do a PDF, it would do a PDF. Otherwise, all other times, this script will print. It'll send to the printer. If I don't want the default to always print, then I have to use this other statement of else if. And I would have to get rid of the else. And I would have to have the same thing right here. So there's a good lesson right there where this script is now only going to uh, do PDFs if the value that came into the script said PDF. Otherwise, it's only going to print if the value that comes in is print. If I got anything other than print, say printer or output or whatever, nothing is going to happen because there is no default on this particular script step with this logical. It's only if I have this, el just the plain else is what I need right there. There we go. Anything after the else is always going to happen. Of course, anything after the whole if section is also going to happen as well. So if I have a go to layout right here, that's always going to happen. So we'll get into the branching and the logic of scripts when we get into the scripting section. Uh, so far, all we're doing is learning about the, uh, the logical functions, which we've done today. And we'll check and see if we've got a few more questions before we uh, log out of the video here. All right, let's switch back to the questions, see if we got any more that came in. All right, uh, so can you quickly demonstrate the choose function? Ah, oh, you guys just want to learn it all. All right, if uh, those of you that are on the chat, and for anybody who wants to keep watching, we can look at the, uh, we'll go ahead and look at the choose function. We'll run a little long here for those that want to look at it. Um, for example, field A, this is HBH Group's uh, example of field A has the auto enter uh, eval of evaluate quote field one. Wow, that's an interesting function. So you're evaluating the quote function actually 
adds quotes to FileMaker and you're evaluating, oh, I see, you're composing a FileMaker calculation in there. Uh, yes, this is very dangerous. Uh, <laughs> so I hate to say it, but uh, this is a very dangerous function for the reason that anytime that you expose FileMaker's calculation engine to a user, if that user knows anything about FileMaker, then they would be able to uh, dig around in the database. They would be able to look for um, things within your file because FileMaker has functions that specifically expose information about a FileMaker file, such as what are all of the fields in this table? What are all of the layout objects on this current layout? With this particular function, and we'll have to look at this tomorrow. It's a really good, uh, a good example of, um, or if not tomorrow, some other video of how this can expose um, some hacking or some mischief in a database. So let's go over the, the choose function because we don't want to go down that path. This would end up being a two hour video, um, but that's a very good one that, that whatever's highlighted right there, the uh, evaluate quote. We, yeah, we don't want to do that. So we'll uh, have to change that. And I'll uh, keep that comment and I'll come up with a, a, a reason to not, or a alternative to using it. All right, so let's take a look at our uh, choose function. I'll go quickly over to, well, we'll switch to the desktop and we will go to the uh, data viewer. Wonderful place to play with FileMaker calculations and we will look at the choose function. All right, now here's a good example of a choose function. Um, we're going to look at, well, really quickly, we're going to look at FileMaker's documentation because this is where choose really comes in handy. I'm going to open up a program, ah, not highlight, I want dash. Ah, my highlighter's on. Thank you, highlighter. Let's get you out of there and open up dash. Dash is what I use for FileMaker's documentation. I'm looking off screen here and going to bring that on screen because it's how I like to reference uh, FileMaker's documentation. And let's put in platform. So FileMaker has a particular function. It is called aptly get system platform. If we scroll down here, you can see that we have a lot of FileMaker's uh, get functions return things with numerical values. Again, numbers are much better and we just translate them into a human readable version down the road. But you'll find out that you should do a lot of your scripts and calculations using numbers and translate them to whatever words you want to use. And FileMaker does the same as well. So when we look at this, what we can see from the get system platform is that FileMaker returns a one for max, a negative two. Now let me explain that. The, in previous versions of FileMaker, when there were different versions of Windows, I forget what the transition was. I think it was like uh, Windows XP, Windows um, uh, Vista or something like that. It's going way back. They used a positive two for one variation of Windows and a negative two for another variation of Windows. Uh, it's been such a long time, I forget. So instead of having one, two, three, and four, FileMaker has to keep their code still working. So there is no significance to the fact that it's negative two, two for Windows other than it's just a historical reason. So it actually adds a little bit of extra work for us when we're dealing with this particular function. It, they don't do it for a lot of other functions, but for this one they do. But let's look at how we can use this with the choose function. Because you can see right here, this is what FileMaker uh, suggests that you do and it's what we have to do. The abs function, a number function, takes off the negative. So that's what we have to do. We are going to, I'm gonna copy this actually right from the documentation, copy that, and we can now use a the choose function in order to actually determine the direction within a script based on the platform that a user is using. This is a very common thing. You're going to use this all the time in a lot of your FileMaker uh, coding. Here is how the choose function works. The choose function uh, specifically has a test right here. What is the test? And the test has to be a zero-based evaluation. So meaning whatever the test is, if the test is and it results in zero, 
the first thing is going that's going to be returned is the first result. Now here again we have all of our options. We have the option to have just a zero result, which if you look at it from the standpoint of the if and the case, choose is almost exactly the same again because if I have a zero result and I have a or a zero test uh, and a zero result, that's all I get. If I have an if test and a blank and just one result, that's the result. But we also have multiple results. So here, watch this. We're going to do this. We're going to type in Macintosh. Then we're going to type in Windows. And then we're going to type in, what were the, I forget what the other ones were. I think it's uh, mobile, which is FileMaker Go. And then we're going to have finally um, WebDirect, which is basically a website. All right, so these are my four options or my four possible results to the choose function. We can see that by giving it a zero, we're actually returning Macintosh. If we return a two, we get mobile. If we turn one, it's Windows. If we turn a three, it's website. Now here's the difficult thing about this particular function. And FileMaker is a, a somewhat confused application because sometimes, like the choose function, they do things zero based, and sometimes they do things one based. Um, in their functions, they'll use start with one, but in choose, they start with zero. In a lot of other programming languages, most everything is zero based, like in JavaScript and PHP. In FileMaker, you just have to know these nuances of these specific functions. So this, this particular function, choose, because it's zero based, you have to think in terms of this isn't one, two, three, and four. This is zero, one, two, and three. So it's a little bit confusing, but once you get used to it, you can actually deal with it. So now let's paste in that value that I had copied right here. So when we paste this in, we remember, and I'll put Windows, the get system platform is returning a one, negative two, three, or four. If we put the abs on it, then that means it's going to return a one, two, three, four, so just an absolute value. So I have to shift this now to basically saying, well, I want this to be a zero-based value. So in order to make what normally would be the first value to be a zero-based value, I just subtract one, so minus one. So this can actually be used minus, need that right there. So there we go. So this is telling me now where normally get system platform is going to be equal to one, I can see that I'm actually using Macintosh. So let's put this into, into our database system. Let's copy this code and let's go put it into a custom function, which we learned a while back. We're going to open our custom functions. We are going to create a new custom function and we're going to call it platform name. Now, you don't have to have a inbound parameter for a custom function. I don't have to pass something into this function. I can just say platform name. Now, I'm looking for something very specific, so I have to know what these specific things are, because if I type in Windows or mobile, then it won't really work. So, with this choose function, and having multiple options to choose from, and simply just controlling the value, making it zero based, in my scripts, I'm now able to have something that's a little bit easier to read. So with my scripts, we can go over, let's create a new script, and I'll just call this simply do this. We'll hide our data viewer here. And now what we get to have is we get to have code that's easier to read. Now this really is a matter of uh, programming and what how you like to do things, but using the if statement, I could very easily do what we've already done. I can have the abs function and I can have the get system platform right there, and I can say equal to one. So that basically means uh, abs silly filemaker expansion with its there we go. So this is a little bit hard to read, wouldn't you agree? If abs get system platform equals one, I really don't have any context here because I don't think in terms of numbers and FileMaker does. So there's two ways for me to solve this. The first way is 
and you'll find that you can do this. You can add a comment so that your scripts add uh, easier. If Macintosh do this, go to this layout. Otherwise, you can assume that the default is um, Windows, or we could have an else if here as well. And we could basically just copy the same code and do this. If uh, it's three, it's mobile. And we can have all of this uh, confusing stuff right here. We would go to a, a completely different layout in this. Otherwise, we would default to a layout for Windows. So here we're accounting for Macintosh, for mobile, and then for defaulting for Windows to go to this other layout. This can be a little bit hard to read, so let's do the same thing but with our custom function. If platform name equals Macintosh. Now, if you like this in terms of readable code, this is a lot easier to come in and read this script than it is to read this. And all we did is we took the obscure nature of the get system platform and the fact that it returns one, two, and three by using a choose function and putting it into a custom function. The problem is if we run into a situation like this where we have else if, and we say platform name equals Windows. Whenever we're dealing with something that is literal, what happens is, what's the different, what happens if we have window and we forgot to put Windows when our custom function is looking specifically for Windows plural? Everything in computing is precise, specific, and exact. So window is not windows, and this particular condition would fail. So it really comes down to how you actually want to code your solution. This one is a little bit more secure because you're dealing with FileMaker's pure FileMaker, uh, its functions. You can consider your own custom functions as uh, pure, because you get to control them and they become part of your FileMaker solution, but you do have to consider that if you open up the possibility where you could accidentally code things so that they would break, you have to know that and you constantly have to uh, be willing to test your own code. So hopefully that's a little bit of a, a longer explanation for the choose function, but it's a very applicable one in terms of how you can use it um, in order to choose for anything. Anything where you have multiple options, you can create that choose function and then branch based off of that, either within a calculation or within your scripts. So, wow, we have gone a full hour on this video, and I hope if you stuck around, you really enjoyed this. Um, I don't, uh, if there's any other comments that came in, yeah, we'll get to that evaluate quote right there. So, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> hey, no problem, HBH group. Um, I'm enjoying creating the content. Um, honestly, there is so much to cover in FileMaker that really, if you want to learn FileMaker even quicker than what I'm doing on these videos, go over to the website to uh, FileMaker Magazine. You are going to be able to learn a lot there. Some of it will seem really foreign and hard, but if you force yourself to walk through the examples, and a lot of the times I go through the debugger and break things down, Little by little, like learning a foreign language, you pick it up and you learn it. And it just becomes really fun because of what you can do in FileMaker. You can truly build so many solutions that you can make software. It's really cool. All right, so that's going to bring us to a close for today's video. And I'll be seeing you tomorrow, another day, another video. But subscribe right here if you want to be notified on YouTube and right here you're going to find the next video coming up in this series. Have a good day and uh, much luck with your FileMaker development. Bye-bye.